Welcome back to the 13th part of elementary statistics. We are going to be looking at outliers and we are going to be uh, going over an example with T-SQL uh, to get outliers. Now we are going to be using um, the, we're going to be using one definition, but I, I will highlight um, maybe some examples of where we might want to change the definition of an outlier here. So for those of you who are wondering what an outlier is on at least the English definition, an outlier is a very abnormal observation in a set of observations. It can be things like a behavioral anomaly, it can be an exception to a rule or a generalization. Um, we're talking about an exception, which is something that's rare, that is, or an incredibly unusual observation. Words in English that generally are intended for outliers, other than, of course, outliers, are things like the word incredible. If you say the word incredible, you're talking about something which is very rare. It's elusive, right? Another um, combination that you see in English is very plus a word. It's very unusual, very abnormal. It's not just abnormal, it's very abnormal. Uh, and then, of course, superlatives. This is, you know, the best moment. This is the worst mo moment. This is the greatest gift. These are, you know, outlier outlier events, okay? That's kind of what that's going on here. Now, in this definition of outlier, we are going to be using plus or minus three, um, we're, sorry, plus or minus three times the standard deviation in addition to the average of whatever we're looking at. <clears throat> it should be of note that three times the standard deviation may not be the definition of the outlier mathematically. So it's going to be average plus a multiple of the standard deviation and it depends on the data set. I'll give you an example. One of my friends is a researcher and he claimed or his I should say his way of looking at some data sets he will use 2.5 times the standard deviation. As a case in point with men he'll generally use 3.5 when he's looking at a data set involving men and with women he'll usually use 2.5 and it's because of how the bell curve is. If the bell curve is very broad um, then he'll use a higher standard deviation. Uh, whereas if it's much more narrow, he'll use a lower uh, a level of standard deviation. The bottom line, though, is when we talk about outliers, they should be unusual patterns, and then they will generally have an effect on the overall data set. So let's go ahead and let's look at a, a simple example. We've already discussed in a previous video that the 300,000 figure um, was an outlier, and we'll go ahead and select from this table just to show all 20 values again. So the highest value here is 300,000, and it's going to get knocked out, and then we have 100,000, and so on and so forth. Um, and the 300,000 figure is definitely the outlier, or one of, yeah, the outlier of this data set. There's only one. <clears throat> so what we're going to do here is we're going to get, we're going to declare the plus and the minus just uh, to set this aside. We're going to have the average, and we're going to add that average to three times uh, the standard deviation of the balance. Again, if depending on the data set, I might use a lower or figure uh, multiple. Let me highlight that. So this right here, this three multiple, um, I may use a higher or lower figure, and it depends on the data set, depends on the bell curve, but the idea is that this is, we're just using it for this example, we're using three multiples. Okay, so we're going to add the average uh, to that three times the standard deviation, or and, and then subtract it. Now, again, this, this scenario, there's no way you can have a negative student loan balance. I'm only using this for an illustration, but this right here would n not be something we would look at. Uh, this this uh, and balance is greater than the, the minus because there's no such thing as a negative balance. But just keep in mind, some data sets, it will go both. There are both sides of the bell curve. In the case of student loans, the lowest balance you can have is zero. Okay, So this would not be something we would normally look at. I'm just doing this for uh, illustration purposes. So when I execute this, it, of course, it's going to return like we you know thought, which is it's going to return every value except for that 300,000 value. So it's going to return 19 values. It's going to knock off the outlier. Um, and that would that would be expected in a data set like this. See, the three hundred thousand is so much higher than all of those figures, and so that would be uh, normal. And it will affect, like, if we were to look at the averages we did in the past example, what happens when we remove the outliers? What's the average then? Well, it's a lot lower, right? And so outliers will really I don't want to say mess up, but they can really have an impact on your your data set and your data tendency overall. What you get back for your data tendency. You can see this by the way with with household income in the United States. Look at household income, uh, average household income, and median household income. Very different, but it's because the average is including those outliers. The median is is more of the central tendency of what we would expect. So uh, this is just a brief video, and again the the big the big takeaway is the multiplier and just knowing your data set because it's not going to be the same uh, for, for every data set.